Okay everyone, welcome back to another video on Gran Turismo Sport. In today's video, we're going to be doing something a little bit different than what I normally do. I'm going to be talking about the braking and a positive change that I think I've made to my setup that has really helped my performance out. And we're going to try and give you some examples of why it's actually increased my pace on Gran Turismo Sport. And hopefully you lot can try and make similar changes or do something to try and help you out. Now, if you have a load cell pedal, you might be able to take this advice a little bit easier because Gran Turismo Sport doesn't really support load cells amazingly well. But I, what I've done is I've stuck with something and it seems to be working out now. So yeah, we're gonna talk about the changes I've made. Basically what I've done is I've changed my brake force setting. Now on a Fanatec wheel, you do get the option to alter your settings within the options on the steering wheel. So I used to run 56% load cell brake force. Now what that means is the load cells basically work in 56% and you get like 56% pressure. The reason I did that on GT Sport was because it's very hard to very hard to modulate the braking inputs um, with the way that the brake curve works on GT Sport. It's not like other games. The brake curve is slightly different. So, yeah, I've now used in 73%, which is a more aggressive so you've got to put a bit more pressure on that brake pedal and this is actually working out really well as you can see in the braking zone here for turn one we're starting this race starting from p3 and you can see as we come into the corners with this new more aggressive setting we've got we're able to monetize that braking much better you can see how we're getting down to like 40 percent there and then gradually dipping off before the apex now this is one thing that's really helping out is because you're able to dip off very lightly before the, the apex and get on the throttle much smoother and i believe this is one of the key areas where I've managed to find a lot of pace in the last six weeks. So originally I opted to 70% and then about two weeks ago, I decided to go a bit more aggressive up to 73%. Now I don't want to do big jumps at once because it could really affect my pace for, you know, like three weeks or so. So I'm gradually increasing it. The aim is to get this brake force up to at least 80% before Gran Turismo 7, because I think it's going to make massive improvements in my pace on that game. And um, you're going to see again, it's really helping out with the overtaking as well, I think, on Gran Turismo, because you're able to control the car in the braking zones a lot better. So we'll have a look at this overtake now, attacking two very good drivers. We've got a, a world finalist driver on our left hand side now we're going to go to the right hand side a very tight angle and this is a perfect example of showing you how having more control over your braking is going to really help you out in situations like this because we're very tight to the right hand side we brake just as late as them if not a little bit later and then as we come to the braking zone you can see dipping off the brake and then as we get into the apex you're going to see that brake uh, the braking slowly dip down all the way until we get into the apex and it's so gradual um, obviously I'm doing it in slow motion to try and show you the effect of it and how we've got much more control over the 50 to 0% on the braking. Now that is the area where I feel I've got more control at the moment. I still think there's more control needed between 50 and 100% so I can start saving tyres better. But in terms of the rotation on Gran Turismo, the, that between 0 and 50% you get a lot of rotation. So let's have a little look here now, zoomed into that braking input. And you can see there, that little area between 50% and 0% and that was played at full speed. That is where you get a lot of rotation on the car on Gran Turismo Sport. It really does make a huge difference. So let's have a little look at a whole lap now, analyzing the braking. And this was our fastest lap in a very um, good race that we did the other day live on stream. So into turn one, you're gonna see the braking input coming in here now. You can see again, all the way up to 100%. And again, what you'll notice is we're getting off that brake before we're getting into the apex and this is enabling us to carry a lot of speed out of the exits of corners and this is an area where i think a lot of people always say well i brake at the same point as you but i'm not able to get the same lap times and a lot of it is because how you break leading up to the apex and getting on the throttle before before the apex and sometimes you know just on the apex is key because some people will I, I notice when i watch people they break all the way up to the apex and then they're later on the front and that is where you're losing a lot of pace so again you'll see as we come into the 100 board 100 percent braking and then we're going to slowly dip off that brake pedal until we're before the apex you'll see we're actually coming off the brake pedal quite a bit before the apex so you can see here now trail braking it all the way off so gradually decreasing that braking input in then off both the accelerator and brake and then onto that throttle 50 percent throttle up to 100 percent throttle and yeah i think this is where my pace has really improved on having the control between zero and 50 percent and getting that extra rotation being able to put tiny inputs on that braking a lot easier now whereas before when it was a little bit more sensitive it was quite difficult to get them tiny inputs on the braking 
to actually help rotate the car so again as we come into this braking zone again very tricky braking zone because it's off cambered and again this is where trail braking really helps with how you rotate a car because when you're off camber you need that extra bit of um, rotation from the brakes and this is where it really helps you see using the brakes to rotate us into the corner and then on the throttle nice and early and pushing out the exit there to gain as much speed as possible so then we'll look at two different types of corners now at the red bull ring these are faster paced corners these two left hand corners in the final two and again this is another area where it's huge benefits look how we're able to go up to full brake but then gradually decreasing and then whole tiny amounts of braking in as we're coming through to the apex and again this is where in higher speed corners being able to control that lower input on the braking is so vital because if you're putting less braking in through high speed corners that means you're carrying more speed through the corner as well so again as we come through to this next phase of these two left hand corners you're going to see we come to the end of the curb and that is where you tend to brake at the red bull ring just at the end of this curb there you'll see the braking inputs going in there and we 50 percent dead on 50 percent braking input whereas before when i had a more sensitive um brake setup on my wheel when it was at 56 percent now what was happening was i was probably putting in like 60 to 70 percent to start with you know going up high and then gradually dipping it down now i'm able to control and modulate that braking a lot better now if you're on spring pedals um, and obviously it's judged by distance it's all about judging that distance and getting your foot used to um, the distance and I think this is where my pace didn't really increase once I got the load cell pedals because I was too I was too um, I, was, I wasn't brave enough really to go with a much more aggressive brake force set and again you can see this corner that tiny bit of braking input input there you lose less speed on approach to the apex but you're still getting the rotation through the corner and then this enables you to carry more speed out of the corner again it's so important that like i'm so glad that i've made this change to my load cells i'm going to try and keep going up and up and up on them load cell settings um for gt sport up to 80 percent hopefully and then with gt7 who knows we might even go further in terms of higher settings but yeah i i the one area that is a bit of an issue with gran turismo is the way the linear that the curve isn't linear on the braking and that kind of makes it difficult however I do think if you put the effort in, higher brake force settings, it's a huge help on GT Sport. Um, we're going to have a little look at the exit here. And this was the whole race that we did live on streaming. You can see with this setting, we're actually improving our pace insanely well. We've got Fire there. We've got um, Affilian, a World, a World Series qualifier. And we've actually come out the pits ahead of them. And now Fire pitted early. I don't know if they might have had little penalties on there, Ron. But looking at our consistency in our lap times, we were doing 36.5s, 36.6s. 36 36 7 36 8 36 6 very consistent driving and this is again not just leading to overall pace improvements in how we're driving it's also leading in consistency improvement because when you're able to rotate that car easier you're able to have more confidence on the brakes and it's in, it's something that i think a lot of people need to understand with like I've, I, I see it all the time how are you able to brake so late how are you able to um carry that speed through the corner it's, a lot of it's just down to trail braking and trying to get that curve where it dips down into you know one percent ten percent braking as smooth as possible on them like on the downshift so again here you'll see 50 percent braking dead on 50 percent again it seems like i'm able to understand now with the new brake force setting how to get to that 50 percent braking a lot easier and it is definitely helping us out and again it's not just helping us out in this type of car we actually are going to have a look after we finish this race at Autopolis in Group 2, which, again, the track is not my favourite combination. However, with this 73% braking and finding a car that agreed with me in terms of the way it handled, we were able to do some pretty solid pace. So we'll have a little look at that now. And as you can see there, as we go over the line, we actually go over the line on a very competitive 48 second point two i think it was which starting from p3 is very very good for myself and i think i've only i think fire managed to get it into the 46s from p1 which looking at that i think we could do if we were starting in p1 which is showing real signs of improvement on the game so we'll go back to last week's daily race this was a different car and again we're going to try and show you what i'm talking about with the braking and again this car it's very noticeable how much smoother you can be with the braking inputs by changing your load cell setting so yeah it does seem like load cell pedals can really work on Gran Turismo if you set them up correctly and if you take the time to get used to them. This is one thing that I will say, you have to give it patience. Um, 
at first I was too impatient with um, trying the higher set and it didn't feel right. I should have kept at it because it's clearly been beneficial since I've gone up to this 73%. And I think I need to go higher, probably up to 80% to have even more control. But that is going to be a, a stage that we go through um, gradually. As you can see through turn one again, that braking input, very smooth. And then able to get on the throttle earlier. This is one of the key things with the trail braking being smoother into the corner. So what does trail braking mean? It basically means you're gradually going through the corner and you're fading off the brake into the apex. What this is doing is keeping the weight of the car on the front of the car. So as you're going into a corner, the weight of the car as you're braking with the trail braking is still on the front tires and that is gonna give your front tires more grip to rotate through the corner and that is why you, you need to do it really and it will gain you a lot of time in terms of lap time and consistency in a race. And yeah, and load cells seem to be, I think with a practice, it does seem a little bit easier to do this over normal spring pedals. So I'm going to keep at this and keep practicing this. You can see as we go into turn one again, you're going to see with the Group 2 car, the GTR 08 model, we can see how we're trail braking off and way before the apex of the corner. Now what this is doing, it's enabling me to get on the throttle very early. You can see that full throttle there, a little lift off as I got a little bit aggressive with the throttle. And that is one area that we probably need to start working on now that we've got the trail braking a lot better is maybe the throttle inputs to try and really optimize our pace in terms of getting it into one smooth transition so you're not off and on the throttle. As we come into this corner, again you're going to see this is very very important you can see looking at the braking how smooth it is now with this group two car look how it fades off into the apex and that is a perfect example of trail braking and what we mean by trail braking because you're keeping that weight on the front of the car to rotate the car through the corner again into this heavy braking zone now where you're going to go maximum attack on that brake straighten the car up and again trail braking off that throttle as you're going into the apex keep the weight on the front of the car tiny bit of braking still going in there to keep that weight on the front of the car and that's going to help rotate the car through the corner and then that's obviously going to enable you then to get back onto the throttle earlier this is something like i keep getting it in my comments when i'm streaming how are you braking so late how you know i'm braking at the same point as you but i'm not able to slow the car down and it's so important to get that trail braking right so lifting your foot off that brake pedal gradually as you feel you know the car gripping up and this is why why having a brake um, a load cell pedal is a huge help because it's done by pressure rather than distance now your muscle memory will remember brake pressure in terms of pat like um power you're putting down on that pedal rather than distance because as a muscle it remembers that much better than distance so yeah you can see the difference it's made in my driving recently and now i did make this change about six weeks ago when we went up to 70 percent when we did the sardegna i think it was sardegna a in reverse and we started competing quite well at that combination and then we i think just at the suzuka combination we increased the brake um, pressure up to 73%. Now that was my first week on it and we were making a couple of errors on the braking. You might have seen it into turn one where I wasn't putting enough braking input in. And that is just a learning curve that you're gonna have to put up with. Whenever you make a change, you're gonna have to put up with that because you're gonna sometimes be not putting enough braking input in to get the braking done because you're too used to another set because your muscle memory is set up to another way of braking but you can see now here last week we started to get fully used to it in higher downforce cars again you can see into this corner we're not going above 50 percent braking for a corner like this because you don't need to and that's where it's so much easier to mon like control and this is obviously going to help our tire wear slightly as well because although it's not tire saving in general we're not going as high on that braking so whereas before we've probably got to 70 percent brakes there we're now only going to 40 to 50 percent braking there and still getting the car rotated so you're putting less force into them tires which is then going to save your tires again through here perfect example this corner just look how little braking input in i'm putting in there whereas again before it was we were putting too much we're just tiny like not even 10 percent sometimes through that corner just to help a bit of rotation and get a bit of trail braking weight to that front tire and give us traction through the corner so yeah hopefully this is try i'm trying to try to explain this as much as possible to people to help you out and you can see again in this race it really did help our finishing pace i think we did it in a very competitive finishing time of 35 seconds there which was pretty strong for myself but yeah let me know in the comment section if this has helped you out give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel i'm going to try and do more videos like this to try and help you out as much as possible before we get to gran turismo 7 and obviously i'm going to keep this going all the way up to gran turismo 7